Hey everyone, welcome back to another fun and exciting Algebra 2 class. Today we are going to be starting chapter number 4. In chapter number 4, we're going to be talking about uh, two variable um, linear and uh, functions and all kinds of different things, mostly having to do with the Cartesian plane. We're going to be graphing in chapter number 4. So uh, in lesson number one, we are talking about two variable linear equations. These would be known as uh, line equations. Uh, we worked with these last year in Algebra 1. Basically, take a Cartesian plane, take a, uh, an equation, and we graph it. We draw the line onto the Cartesian plane. So a few things we need to go through before we really get into the lesson. If you look down here at the screen, I have this is quadrant number one. Don't forget that, quadrant number one. And in quadrant number one, they are always positive, positive. What is this? Remember, the X always comes first and the Y always comes second when we're writing our coordinate uh, points out. Um, this is the X axis, the one that's horizontal. Okay, and this is the y-axis, this one that's vertical, the up and down one is the y, the left and right is the x. So if you look at these, your x point, you count left and right. Your y point, you count up and down. That's how that works. And I think most of you have a pretty good grip on that from, uh, from last year from Algebra 1. All right, so let's look over here and then at quadrant number so in quadrant number two, the X is negative. Okay, remember this is going negative. Left is negative and to the right is positive. And in this one, the Y is positive. That means we're going up. And then remember if we go down, that's negative. So the third quadrant, they're both negative. We're going left on the X, or on the X and we're going down on the Y. So you come out with a negative, negative quadrant. And then the fourth quadrant is uh, positive on the X, that's to the right, and then negative on the Y or down. Now, let me show you something here that you may not have caught in, in Algebra 1. This quadrant right here is a positive quadrant, and that makes sense, okay? Why? Because they're both positive. Well, let me show you another one. This quadrant here is also a positive quadrant. And some of you might be looking at that going, no, nope, I think he's lost his mind. Finally, he's finally lost it. No, look, what do you get when you have a negative negative in algebra? Two negatives make a positive. This is your positive quadrants right here. Okay. Now, this is something, this is kind of at the end of the chapter or end of the lesson, we'll get back to it. But if you have a line sloping this way, so in other words, it starts down here and it ends up here. Not that it ever ends, but you get the idea. This is a positive slope. Why? Because it's in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. Now, what about these two quadrants. Well, number two is a negative quadrant. Why? Because it's negative positive, so it's negative. Quadrant number four is also a negative quadrant. So these two are negative. And if we ever have a line that's sloping from the upper left to the bottom right, that has a negative slope. This line would be what's called a negative sloping line. Why? Because it's starting in the second quadrant, which is negative, and it's ending in the fourth quadrant, which is also negative. And again, we're going to get to that at the end of the lesson today, so stay tuned. And that way I won't have to come back to that. All right, so if you'll go ahead and look in your book. Uh, I forgot to tell you what page number we're on. I guess that would have helped you. We're on page 154 in your book, 154. And you'll see that. Cartesian plane there with the uh, different quadrants one two three and four they've got a little example that I got like I just showed you um, don't forget some of the key things to that you know just look there look it over and make sure you're comfortable uh, with that so the next thing that they talk about 
is the distance formula. So if you look here, I have it written down. In your book, it is written on page 155. Page 155. What this is, is the distance between two points. So let's say we have a graph and we have one point here and one point over here. What is the distance between those two points? Well, the good news is we have a formula that will tell us that. So the example in the book is they give you point um, negative one five, that's our first point, and our second point is three two. So what I like to do is typically I'll call this point number one and this point number two. Why? I don't know. Because that one came first in the order. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with which one you call one and which one you call two. So in other words, you can't switch it halfway through the problem and say, oh, I want that one to be point two now. No, it has to stay point one. If you start it with point one, it has to stay point one. All right, so what we're going to do is, and another thing is don't forget, that's the X and that's the Y. So this is the X1 and this is the Y1. And over here, we have the X2 and the Y2, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug these points into this formula. Okay? Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll solve the formula. All right, so x1, well, we'll start with x2 since it starts with x2. So that would be big square root sign. And we have 3 minus minus 1. Now, you don't have to write it like that. We know, we've been doing algebra long enough, that minus minus always gives us a plus. So we could say 3 plus 1. Don't forget to put your parentheses, and we have to square that. We have to square whatever the sum is inside of that. And then we're going to add it to whatever the sum is over here. So y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is 5. And we're going to square that sum. So we're just going to keep going. Um, obviously, you could use your calculator here if you want to. That would be fine. Um, but I'll just go ahead and do it for you. So right there, we get 4 squared plus 3 squared. Well, negative 3 squared. But it doesn't matter because it's in parentheses. So it's going to be positive. What would it be if that negative sign was outside of the parentheses? Well, it would give us negative 9, but it's not. It's inside. Okay. So it's going to give us a positive answer. Negative 3 times negative 3 equals positive 9. So we're going to have 16 plus 9. And don't forget, this is still all inside the square root sign. 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of 25 is plus minus 5. However, um, in distance, you could never have negative distance. Negative distance is not a thing. Uh, well, at least in what we're dealing with in the real world. So we will have 5. Our answer is just 5. We don't have to put the positive and negative value of that. Okay? So that's distance. Not too bad. Just remember the formula and then plug into the formula and you'll get the answer. All right, next thing is midpoints. So they're on page 155, page 155 near the bottom. Um, it has a capital M, and I want you to pay attention to that because in our next formula, we're going to have one with a little m. And so the capital M is midpoint. The little m is something else. And if, you've been, if you remember from last year, the little m is slope. And so that's how we... Um, that's how we abbreviate slope is with an M. Why? I don't know. I didn't do it. I'm not the one that came up with it. Um, but capital M means midpoint. What is the midpoint? Well, it's this idea. Let's say we had a graph and we've got a point right here and we've got a point right here and we connect those two points with a line. Um, I went a little bit over here. Sorry. It's a little bit hard for me to do. We connect and then we say, well, what is the midpoint? What does midpoint mean? The, the point in the middle. That's what a midpoint is. And so 
The, the last one figured out the distance, the whole distance. This one is figuring out the midpoint. Okay, where's the middle of the line? Well, here is our formula. Midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, x1 plus x, or excuse me, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. In other words, here's what this is going to give us. This is going to yield an x point, comma, y. This is going to yield coordinate points. So when we figure this out, we are going to know what our midpoint is, our specific point that's in the middle of our line. All right, so let's look at example page 155. So our points are 8, 10. Uh, oh, it's 8, negative 10. Sorry about that. 8, negative 10 and 6, negative 2. So what we'll do same thing, we'll plug the, the y1s into the y1s, the x1s into the x1s, the y2s into the y2s, and the x2s into the x2s. Um, you could name them whatever one you want. Again, this one comes first, so I'm going to call it 1. And so this would be x1, so we got an 8, plus there's the x2, which is 6, divided by 2, comma, and then the y1, which is negative 10, plus the y2, which is negative 2, divided by 2. Now we just want to solve this out. 8 plus 6 is going to give us 14 divided by 2, which is going to give us 7. And then over here, we're going to get uh, plus, so it's going to be a 12 negative. Um, minus or divided by two sorry and then it's going to give us a negative six negative six and that would be our coordinate points this would be our midpoint and so you would probably write it like this you'd probably write m equals capital m don't write little m little m will look like slope make sure you write a capital m if it asks for midpoint okay all right, go ahead and turn your page over, and this is why we have to use capital M, because now we're, we're going to find the slope. And the slope uses the little m as its abbreviation. So let's go ahead and look here. And let's say they give us two points again. So again, they give us two points. So point number one is negative two comma zero, and I'm on page 156. Example for uh, 4.1 C, 4.1 C, uh, and the other point is uh, 0 2. Now what I'm going to do is again just plug into the formula and then solve it. So y2 is 2 minus y1 is 0, and that's going to be over x2 is 0 minus x1, which is minus 2, so we could write that plus 2. Minus minus 2 means plus 2. We'll solve that. 2 minus 0 is 2 over 0 plus 2 is 2, and so our slope would be 2 over 2 or 1, or you could write 1 over 1. Um, basically, the idea here is that every time we rise 2, we run 2. Because remember, this is rise over run. So rise over run. What does that mean? Well, that means this is your y over your x. In other words, this is your up and down over your left and right. Rise over run. Rise up and down. That's your Y point. That's the one that's going up and down. Run, your X point, the one that is going left and right. So every time that we rise 2, we run 2. Every time we go up 1, we go over 1. That's, uh, that's what that means because we can reduce this to 1. Now, I personally always like slope in fraction form. Even if it's, you know, let's say your slope is 4. Well, I would prefer you write it 4 over 1.
because then I know you know this is the y and this is the x. Sometimes when you don't do that and you just write 4, you forget to run 1 and you sometimes end up with a vertical line uh, instead of having a slope on it because this technically does have a slope of 1, uh, a, a run of 1. So the slope is 4 over 1. All right, that was just an example. That's not the answer. This is the answer, or one is the answer, if you reduce that out. A couple other things here about slope. Don't forget, if you ever get a fraction like 0 over 2, then that means that this is 0 slope. 0 as a numerator is okay in math. It just comes out to 0. It's like saying 0 divided uh, by 2 or, you know, so it just gives you 0. Now, this is not okay in math. What if it's 2 over 0? Well, if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get math error. You are going to get undefined. So what does that mean? Well, it means that 0 can never be a denominator in math. It's not a possible solution. In graphing, however, sometimes it does come out with the denominator 0. So what do you do? Well, here's what that means. This means undefined. Undefined. All right. So let's look at what these two things look like. So let's say we have our graph over here. A, I'll do this one in pink. I'll circle it in pink, and I'll do the line in pink. Zero slope means we have a horizontal line. What's horizontal line mean? Horizontal line means that it is parallel to the x-axis, okay? To the x-axis. Right here we have a parallel line. That's zero slope. And then I'll do this one in purple, undefined. What does that mean? It means that my line goes like this. It is parallel to the y-axis. Or you could say it's perpendicular to the x-axis. You could say that either way. Uh, either thing is true. Okay, so that's zero slope and undefined slope. Which brings me down here and the four different types of slope. We've mentioned them all now, and now I just want to review them. So the first type of slope is positive slope. Positive slope goes from the bottom left to the upper right. Bottom left to the upper right. Negative slope goes from the top left to the bottom right. Top left to bottom right. Zero slope, which is what we just talked about, is parallel to the x. It's a horizontal line. There's no slope. Uh, another word for slope is incline. So the line is not inclined at all. It's flat. And number four is undefined. It's parallel to the y. It's vertical. Okay, So you could write horizontal and vertical under those two. And that might help you just a little bit. All right. Well, that's all I have for you. I know there's a lot in there. If you missed something, make sure to go back, check it out, review the video if you feel like you've missed something. Make sure to memorize those three formulas I gave you. They're very important as we go forward. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.